Hello! Tonight we're going to just make a cull and skink. That's a traditional Scottish soup made with potato and haddock. Now it comes from Cullen, which is just like up the northeast coast of Scotland, uh, round from Bath, Port Soy, then Cullen. So we're going to have a bash at that. The reason I've chosen this tonight initially was because the weather had kind of changed and although it wasn't um, cold, you know, it's not sunny but it's not cold either, so I didn't want a big meal and I thought this would be super. But with all the happenings today as well, everything going on at Parliament, I thought it'd be nice and quick. So I don't want to, wait to be away from my telly too long. So we've got 25 grams of butter here going straight into a hot, a hot pot. And then it should be two onions chopped. What I've sillily done though is realised I only had one. But remember last week I was saying to you that if you see yellow labels, always pick them up because you never know when they'll come in handy. Five pence. We got a pack of sibies last week for five pence. So today I'm just going to use a mixture of onions and sibies. So just for quickness, I'm just going to pop them in to the butter, even though it's not quite melted yet. Now in this pot, we have 300 mils of white peppered milk. Now probably just about a quarter teaspoon of white pepper. I, I, like, I do like it quite peppery. So into that, we're going to just put 250 grams of haddock. I have skinned it, which is why it's a wee bit messy, but uh, I got most of it off, so I was quite chuffed. But you don't need to skin it, that's up to yourself. I've skinned it and then I cooked up the skins just for a couple of minutes in the microwave in a little water and kept the liquid from that for later. Now haddock, it doesn't need to be haddock. I'm using haddock tonight, because uh, we just buy it in Lidl and it's not too expensive. But if you want, um, smoke cobbler, river cobbler would work just as well for this. Or even if you want to just buy the packs of frozen haddock, just make them direct from the freezer. You know, because that, that way it can just be a spur of the moment tea. Kenny, thankfully, just went and bought some haddock for me on the road home tonight. So that's how we are managing to do this one. Now these onions, you're wanting to just cook just for a couple of minutes, just to get them, as the chefs would say, the translucent. And whilst they do, we'll just have a bit of a chat because, my goodness me, what is going on today? Eh, I was late going to sleep last night. So I already knew David Davis said that they resigned and then everything else that was happening. And then of course today it was like, where's Boris? You know, where's he gone? He's missing. Just to announce at three o'clock in the afternoon that he's resigned also. I shouldn't look so happy because uh, even I felt a wee bit sorry for Theresa May today when she was standing there in the Parliament was jeering her, but hey ho, what can you say? Because, well again, I don't know if any of you are aware, but one of the MSPs up here last week, Mary Todd, she'd very kindly made some tablet for kids going into um, summer camp, kids that, you know, in the care system that go to summer camp. So, as it's been going said all weekend, I don't know how much more fudge Theresa May can uh, actually manage, but I'll stick with Marie's tablet myself. So just keep these cooking for a couple of minutes more but they are actually starting to soften already because the sideways don't take quite so long as onions would. But we'll just, oh there's Kenny coming in for a close up. At least it'll be nice colours as well with the bit green from the sideways. So again we're wanting this had it just to come to the bubble and then what you're going to do is just cook it for five minutes. It's literally just to soften it and to give your milk some flavour. Once you've cooked it, you retain the milk, because we'll use the milk for in here. Now I'm making a wee bit more than I, I normally would tonight, but the recipe will tell you just four large potatoes. I've got about 600 grams worth of chopped potatoes. Now what I've done is I've made an assortment of sizes. So we've got some small, oh, I just dropped that one. We've got some quite small, some quite big, that way, some of them will break down. Now, this will be up to yourself later. You can judge the thickness yourself, and at that point, you might want to add some corn flour and a wee drop milk just to thicken it. That's the reason I've done potatoes different sizes, because some of them should break down and actually create some thickness themselves. To this potato mix, just want to watch this. Haddock, we're not wanting it to bubble over. 
we're going to add just but between 300 and 500 mils. Again, it depends how much you want. I'm using 500 tonight because like I said, I've got a bit more potato than I normally would. I'm not going to actually use it all. I'm going to use just about 400 there. Of what? Of just boiling hot water with, for me, it's got the little bit of the stock from the skins that I had it actually cooked up. Now you're just wanting that to come up to the boil and then leave that for 15 minutes and whilst that's cooking for 15 minutes what I'm going to do is just remove this fish after five minutes and allow it to cool just slightly so as then I can like put it into chunks and put it into here now the reason I'm doing it like this tonight is so as if it slightly splits we can actually then like it's curdled sometimes, the, the milk curdles when it's got the haddock. So doing it this way means eventually if it does actually curdle, we can um, just sip it off. You can never throw anything away. There's always usually ways that you can salvage everything. But I'm going to just stop this for a second, get Kenny to stop cooking, uh, recording because there's nothing else I can really do here for a minute or two. And I'm going to go, the ice got arrived today, so I'm going to go and read the Orkney news page and the Blazes page whilst I'm waiting. So we'll catch it in about 15 minutes. Right, so what we're just going to do is we're just going to strain the fish directly into my soup tonight because it's actually broken up quite nicely itself after just a few minutes. That was maybe because I skinned it, but never mind. So we'll just pop it straight on. These are handy things if you ever see them in the charity shops. You often wonder what people use them for. These great big spoon things. Well, I'll, I'll never use whatever the old king's laughing at me. <laughs> they probably have a technical name. It's a spoon thing in my house. Uh, and I'll let, do you know, I use it for two things. This and Kenny's uh, man of fat peas. <laughs> oh, you can't stand them, but you need to get them out of your pot just the same. Now, I'm going to be quite lucky tonight. Mine hasn't split. I have kept out a sieve just in case. Now, this is my, what I call my grotty sieve. I use this for things like that. I don't, you know, I keep them separate from my, from my baking sieves. I always keep one that's kind of old. But this one I can see already. It hasn't curdled. But I'll just add it slowly anyway. Through my spoony thingy, whatever it is. Do you know what that's called, Kenny? Yeah. Good then. It's a spoony thingy. <laughs> That's exactly what it is, a spoony thingy. So, <laughs> oh it's a madhouse. Right, at this point what we're going to also do is just get all that fish off it, bring this back to the bubble and I'm going to just add just some dried parsley to this. Some of your fish will be darker than mine's has, so my, my dinner is going to be quite probably anemic looking. Um, maybe too anemic for some. But if you, when you're buying your fish, if you get a dark uh, coloured smoked one, then, you know, uh, um, I'll give your soup some colour. However, that's something that, you know, fish, when you see a bright orange in that, it is literally a colourant that's going into it. So, I mean, if you want to keep a bit more natural and you can put up with things being a bit anemic looking, we don't actually, it just helps. So whilst that's coming to the boil, what I've also done tonight is I've cooked some bread, so hopefully we don't get too much steam coming out here. And this is just my usual easy loaf, however I have let it rise twice today, uh, sorry, I, yeah I've let it rise twice today. So I've literally just popped it back in the oven for a second and all this is is a garlic and herb bread. So it's just the 400 grams of flour to 200 grams of water. Two tablespoons of oil, um, one packet of yeast or a teaspoon of yeast, teaspoon and a half of yeast and some salt. Now it stayed quite flat this one but then it's just because it's spread out on a big tree on the second rise. Um, a teaspoon of herbs or oregano was all I used and a teaspoon of garlic. Let it rise for a couple of times into the oven for 20 minutes and now we have our bread to go with the soup. The soup will probably take another 10-15 minutes to cook. You want to cook this through now until your potatoes are nice and soft. So we'll come back in about 10 minutes and see how we're getting on. Okay, so what we did was we've come back 
just to double check before you serve it, always check your tastes. So for me tonight, there was a couple of things. Tonight I decided to thicken it a wee bit. So all I did was just um, a teaspoon of corn flour with a wee drop of milk, stirred it, mixed it together and added it in. I also decided it was a wee bit anemic looking. So I literally just like one or two wee sprinkles of turmeric just to give it some colour. My potato has since started to break up, so again that's given it the natural thickness. And so now all we need to do is add some parsley, hold some parsley back just um, to sprinkle across the top of your plates. So just a handful or thereabouts of some chopped parsley. I don't know if you saw it sitting earlier. So just as I was waiting on the soup cooking, I don't know when I'm next going to use my parsley, so all I've done is popped it in a pot and the garden and hopefully it'll come. I'd stolen some from Fiona's garden a month or so back but it has now come, well it's starting to come but it's not come enough that I could be using it for tonight's tea. So it's always quite handy if you're able to to have some uh, parsley on the go. We'll just quickly take a wedge of this off for pen and butter it. Now, this was actually, this is up to you, you could just have made it ordinary bread, um, but we are having it with, like I say, some garlic and herbs tonight. Just, oh, excuse me, fall into bits here. But just must be hard. Um, experiment with your bread. You know, I've never actually made this one before, so I'll leave a wee footnote afterwards. Don't make it as rubbish, just in case. It can be much different from buying garlic and herb bread, like it's just buttered. So, anyway. Pop it out for them. Now, you might not want your soup as thick as this. We quite like it thick. So if you don't want it thick like this, because like I say, your potato does break down and thicken it anyway, just don't add the corn flour. Good big plate full. Then just a wee bit parsley across the top. Oh, and the other thing I actually had to add a wee drop uh, season. It was just the uh, haddock couldn't have been very salty tonight. So I have literally just added a tiny wee bit of season and a wee drop more pepper. So like I say, always taste it and see how you're going. Right there. Across the middle. And there you have tonight's dinner of cull and skink with some garlic and herb homemade bread. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you.